Today I'm at Slide Ridge Honey in Utah and I'm going to show you a story of two brother and sister, Carla and Martin, talking about how they are manufacturing honey and the best honey vinegar, as far as I know, in the world. Watch this out. Beekeeping, I think, is as serious now as it has been the last 10,000 years. But I think that the ones that do a good job are the ones that keep a positive attitude, the ones that network with a lot of good beekeepers, the ones that really pay attention to the bottom line, to the resources that they do have, and try to improve upon that, um, is, is the secret. I think it boils down to a story I heard years ago. And we were out camping, and the, the scoutmaster says, you know what? I don't have to be the fastest runner. I just have to outrun you mm -hmm. <laughs> when the bear comes. Yes. And, and that's the way business is. Uh -huh. You know, you may not have to be number one. You may not have to be the fastest runner. But as long as your percentages are good and you stay ahead, stay ahead of the pack or with the pack, you're going to do okay. Mm -hmm. And I think the main thing is, is that we're here to help those along that are here with us. And I, I think that's more important to do business honestly and with integrity and to help those that we can and, and move forward in life because that's what we take with us. This is a comb and we bring the combs in. We leave the bees out in the field okay. and then the comb slides down in here. This machine turns on and the blades vibrate and that just takes barely the cappings off. And so then they come down here, the cappings fall into this mm -hmm. area here and then go back to the capping spinner back here where the little bit of honey is reclaimed, but that's where we claim a lot of the wax. So that wax is taken out, that's the capping's wax. It's the cleanest, purest wax that the bees make. And then that goes into skincare products. Um, hand balms, um, my niece makes all that. We worked it up for her and she's taken it from there and added to it and um, kind of like Burt's Bees products. Uh -huh. There's chapstick, hand balms and all kinds of neat products. So that's where the wax goes. The frames come out of here and into a centrifuge. And so this, the frames stand in here on their end like this and then this spins and the honey is thrown out and along the sides right here. Drains down and out of the uh, ports right there into a sump and then from there, it's pumped up across and back over here to a jacketed stainless steel milk tank where we can gently warm it. About 95 degrees is all the warmer it gets. And that's also the filtration system. So the wax floats to the top and then there's a trap in there that traps anything heavy. And then the other end has a valve on it that we bottle out of. From there, the honey is either bottled as honey, such as okay. pure raw honey, or it's made into vinegar. What do you guys do marketing-wise with your products? What have you been doing? They come to us and it's wonderful. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, that's how you want it. <laughs> well, we did go to the San Francisco Fancy Food Show. And after the show, the San Francisco Chronicle did a newspaper article, news write-up, mm -hmm. and there were 1,300 vendors, mm -hmm. 80,000 products represented, and they listed their favorite top 10 and we made their top 10. They didn't list them in ranking, but just to be out of 80,000 products to make the top 10, wow. that's huge. And uh, that was, that, that, was, was really that was really fun. Right now we're looking for distributors. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're trying to find distributors to work with retailers. Okay. Harmons has been a great retailer here in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, they're a local company also, but they're, they're a huge company also. Right. And they've given us a lot of time and they, they put us on the shelf. They also do Utah's own days, and that's where we met you guys, yes. um, you know, to promote local products, um, to let us into their store, you know, so that we don't have to stand in the rain, and also to, to, to help us along. I mean, there was a lot of people there, and they had to do the advertising, which cost money, to get people to come in to see our products. Matt Caputo has been indispensable. Um, he's been a champion of local farm-to-table products, um, he's been a champion of, of not all, just not because they're local, but because they're good. He really, really, really is worth his weight in gold. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's a lot of marketing right there. Sure. Farmers markets are hugely important. Do you participate? Uh-huh. We go to the farmers markets, but they're seasonal. Mm -hmm. So when we're at the farmers market, customers always ask, where are you going to go? And, you know, they're always told, well, in this section, go to, Matt, to Tony Caputo's. You know, if you can't get it there, then go to Harmon's. 
and then that kind of builds up an off-season clientele that you can get your product on the shelf and then the customers are asking for it because secondary customers are very important. Repeat business. We're getting outside of Utah, um, milepost 65 in Washington. We just shipped them a pallet um, a week ago, week and a half ago. And so that's 100 cases. That's a, that's a huge ship shipment when you start shipping by the pallet. And so, but we're, we're getting out there. We just released this in June of last year. Oh, the, the vinegar. Oh, really? Uh-huh. And so it's only, it hasn't been on the market 12 months yet. It's still in its infancy. We produce about 48 gallons a day. And so our production is coming up. But, uh, you know, when you start it, my first week I produced a quart. That was pretty good. I produced a quart of vinegar a week. Uh -huh. And, but then from there, you know, then sales come up and then you need to double production and I need two quarts a week. You know, and then from there, you've got to go to five gallons a week. And then, you know, so each, each time you increase production, then sales go up and then production goes up and sales go up. So we hopefully, um, it'll keep growing like that and we'll be able to pull it up by its bootstrap, so to speak, mm -hmm. and, uh, and stay ahead of it and up with sales and, and keep our production numbers up. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it, it's a challenge. It's a lot of fun. So to go through the vinegar process, we have clean totes. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we put honey and water and yeast in here okay. and then ferment that to wine. So that's mead, which is honey wine. Mm -hmm. And this is a tank of wine right here. Uh -huh. This is a tank of vinegar right here. So what I do is I take um, about seven gallons out to 14 gallons, depending on what we're running. Mm -hmm. And I put that in here. It circulates up through my reactors right here, these stainless, three stainless steel tanks. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the reaction takes place. There's mother in there or acerbators, okay. which eat alcohol. They eat the alcohol completely gone and give off acetic acid, which is vinegar. vinegar yeah. And so that happens in there and then it drains back down into this tank mm -hmm. and then it circulates through several times a day. And then I end up with a tank of vinegar. There's only three of us in the world that I know of that make it. Honey is very diverse meaning that a yeast does not like it. And so if you have the wrong yeast, you get off flavors, as, as acetone, uh, diesel fuel, uh, gasoline, it's, it's terrible. It took me seven years to develop that vinegar. The thing that's really amazing and almost shocking about it is the little kids love it. Really? My grandkids, I mean, they're like grandma, our bottle's empty. And in fact, my granddaughter was at my house this weekend and she had this humongous bowl of ice cream and she had just like dumped a fourth a cup of vinegar on it. My sister's little guy, he wants his water bottle just full of vinegar. Dalton, we, he was running around out here, yeah. he was about four. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, he was up to the house the other day and grandma was out and he was mad. So we gave him his water bottle and says, go down to the honey house, Martin's making vinegar, he'll fill it up for you. So he came down here and was mad at Martin because Martin wouldn't put it straight full of vinegar. I put it's water in it with him. <laughs> it makes a very refreshing drink, but he wanted it straight and he oh. wanted the whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I never fix a water bottle. Like this is my water bottle today. Come this way, Martin. <laughs> and I never fix a water bottle. I don't put vinegar in it. Uh -huh. Vinegar is huge. It makes your body less um, acetic because you want your body to be more alkaline. You know, that's why vegetables are so important and everything. Vinegar is huge for you medicinally. Mm -hmm. Huge. It does really good things for diabetes, cholesterol, and oh, stomach stuff. If you've got an upset stomach or um, indigestion. Heartburn. Oh, heartburn especially. Uh, leg, yeah. leg cramps. You, I can tell when my husband's not drink enough vinegar and kept up on it because he's heading in to get vinegar before he goes to bed. Takes care of it just like that. Wow. Tell me as a business owner some of the challenges you have faced. Um, some of the challenges, uh, we had a problem with our bees about six years ago mm -hmm. which came from greed. So greed is a hard business. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say that's a, that's a challenge. Um, you can't push the bees too hard because the bees are bees. Right. And if you push them too hard they'll collapse and you, you know your first option is to take care of your bees best. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess the next one would be financial. Everybody has a financial challenge. True. I don't know anybody that has enough money to do all the things they want to do when they want to do it, but I would say that's kind of a challenge. Um, and then the one everybody always complains about the weather. Uh -huh. I mean, how can that not be a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, well, challenges all this change with the weather. Does it affect at all the bees or? Mm, well, weather is, and bees are part of the world. You know that we live in. It's agriculture, and you have to adjust to it, and you do the best you can, and and hopefully next year is good also. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at business and competition uh, probably most different than anybody else. I, when people come over and want to know how, I, I show them right to the bare knuckles, right to the, the bare bones, the nuts and bolts of how to do it. Uh, they have the same opportunity and I, I don't consider people to be in competition. Right. When be people want to learn how to keep bees, um, uh, you know what, I take them out in the field, we go through hives, they read books, and I'll teach them how to keep bees as best I know how. That's, that may not be enough for them. But uh, you know, I don't think that competition, just because they produce honey, that they're in competition with me. You know, they've got a, you know, there's so many different ways. There's room for everybody. And there's room for everybody. And I think a lot of people spend so much time thinking that the world's in competition with them mm -hmm. that they spend so much time trying to uh, fight that that they lose sight of their own business. And they don't grow their own business. Why everybody else goes ahead, then, you know, it, it, it's, it's fascinating. It, it really does on the wasted energy and the wasted resources, the wasted time spent thinking that you're in competition with somebody mm -hmm. because you're really not. Yeah. It, you're really, really, really not. You know, there was a lot of people that came to me when we first started this and says, oh, you don't want to do a family business. No, 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 no. You don't want to do a family business and all these horror stories. Yes, exactly. It, it's like uh, um, having a baby. Everybody has to tell you how bad the babies are. Yeah. Everybody's had a baby, but <laughs> they want to tell you how their horror story. Uh -huh. um, Mars Candy Bar is a family business. Mm -hmm. Firestone is a can family business. The one that's going to give you goosebumps is the Huntsman's run a family business. The largest corporation in the United States, just finished John's book, yeah. is a family business. a family business. So why wouldn't you want a family business? Family businesses are the dynamics that actually make a business succeed. Mm -hmm. Because first you check your ego at the door and everybody can throw in an idea. In our family business, both of my sisters, my mom and dad, my two brothers, all have the same input. Mm -hmm. Somebody will come up with an idea, we'll roll it around the table for more ideas, and when we come out of that meeting, we have a plan. We have an idea that is, you, you can't outthink them. Mm -hmm. You can't outthink a think tank. And it's your daughter that <laughs> manufactures the, the beauty products. Yeah, uh -huh. my daughter. She's a home mom, a stay-at-home mom, and she's got two kids in uh, elementary school, and so she just does it at her home, and. And uh, actually does most of it over the internet okay. and people just pull up her is little she happy with the results online oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. Uh, she's doing as much business as she wants to do and so people just go online to our website and can link into hers or go straight into hers be simple okay. it's simple yeah be like be b e e and then simple like s i m p l e dot com Awesome. With my sister and I, would, I think this is our eighth year, ninth year in right. commercial as beekeeping a as a family business. Okay. I had my first beehives when I was nine years old. Uh. And so it's always been a fascination. It, it's just fun. Uh -huh. And so that's... Uh, and how good is the honey business? Very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh -huh. it, uh, the honey business... You know, the first thing is, is to have fun. I get to spend a lot of time right. with my sisters. Mm -hmm. um, I get to spend time with my mom and dad. It's a, it's a lifestyle. I like to say it's a lifestyle millionaires couldn't afford to live. Uh -huh. Tell me so, why. So, well, I have all the freedom and you know, that uh, they don't have, mm -hmm. and I have all the freedoms that most people don't have. Mm -hmm. I get to do what I want. I, I run. We run our own business. Um, family comes first. We get to take care of our families and be with our families when we need to, and in that way, mm -hmm. um, I, who has a better life? So we just visited. Marvin and Carla's company with, with all that amazing honey, right? And it was a very nice visit. Marvin and Carla, really smart people. And they, they have a very cool business. You see a family business that's been running really well and just growing and growing and growing. 
I hope you did pay attention to the fact that they actually have a business inside a business. If you didn't notice, go back and re-listen to the interview because this is crucial in, in our businesses. We should have a business inside a business so we have multiple channels of revenue coming and sometimes in a slow season you figure a way of monetizing you know, in a way that you wouldn't if you only had one form of making money. On the other hand, we also heard them say that they don't need to do any marketing, right? Because people are coming to them. Not only that, they're not selling to the end consumer. They sell to distributors, to supermarkets. So at the moment, everybody comes to them. And that's a very cool uh, moment in, in their business life. But it's also very dangerous because they are leaving the control of their channel of revenue in the hands of other people. They are not doing anything to assure that should some of them stop buying should anything happen in the economy again they would be safe and they would have multiple uh, people coming to them and buying on a non-stop basis but they would have some control over that which, which they don't at the moment not only that this is the perfect moment when I have buyers coming to me like they do and these buyers are going to sell to the end consumer this would be the perfect timing for them to talk more about honey to the end consumer, create awareness with their company. You know, there are so many things related to honey that they could be talking about. Not only cool recipes, but all the things you can do with honey. Uh, they do have somebody in the family with a, with a business mixing honey and beauty products. They can talk about that. They could even talk about the bees and why they are so important to, to humankind. Okay, so they could make it really interesting. At the same time, create more awareness for that company so the end consumer would understand that they are about something, something that they care on an emotional level. It's just not honey because honey per se is just a commodity. Okay, so I would suggest Marvin and Carla that you pay attention to that and use this very good moment to capitalize even more into the trend you're in and never, never allow the others to have control over your, your channel of, of revenue okay because you want to make sure you have that in a structured way so whatever happens outside you're still good but other than that we all should pay really good attention on how they're running their business because they're true entrepreneurs see you next time Ooh.